So hello everyone, welcome to Part of Man of Wynwood. My name is Colette and this is our Wynwood Art Talk. We are privileged to have the very talented Curry Myrtle here today. I will keep this introduction brief because I really want you to hear about your creative journey. Um, but Kern is a gifted fiber artist whose fusion of fiber and repeating results in street art that activates hidden spaces. I first encountered your work when we opened our campus here in 2021. I was walking around and I saw your work and I was just fascinated and thrilled and excited because I dabble in fiber art and I love graffiti as well. So um, your textile tagging adds a feminine uh, mystery, mystique to this male dominated world uh, in Linwood. And that's why I'm fascinated with your work. Hmm. Um, I wanna give um, gratitude and thanks to the Humanities Edge, which is an organization that helps spot sponsor these art talks. So I'm gonna give a warm welcome to Thank her you. and then she can start her talk. Yay! Thank you. Thank you, Colette. Thank you, Alyssa, for doing the technical things to get us going here tonight. Thank you all for being here. Um, so I'm I am Kern, and I was going to begin by asking if any who in the room has ever done knitting and crocheting. So a few people actually all oh, but you. I gotta get I gotta fix that. Um, so you know, you have some idea of what this is about, but it's, there's a lot of ideas, you know, when it comes to spray paint and yarn, there are some real sort of preconceived notions about both. Um, when you think of crochet, I don't know what you think about, but one of different things kind of come to mind. So you might think of sort of the older lady, the 70s top sort of thing, or this granny on the motorcycle covered in yarn, which by the way is AI. If you've been seeing those going around on Instagram um, or wherever on TikTok, all the grannies with big cats, grannies with yarn bomb Lamborghinis, that's all made by this lady in Ukraine called Lydia. Um, and I put her Instagram at the bottom of her picture because so many people have sent those to me. I mean, endless, <laughs> endless people have sent these to me. Um, any other thoughts when you think about something that's been crocheted or knitted, like what, I don't know, what kind of feeling does that give you? Like a blanket. Like a blanket. It's like, it's like Native American. Mm -hmm. vibe. Like Native vibes. I'm just repeating it so it gets into the recording better. So um, warmth, like coziness, your grandma, like almost everyone says, oh, my grandma used to do that. Or oh, my grandma taught me or tried to teach me or whatever. Um, But, you know, you don't necessarily think of this being out in the public seen out on the street. Um, it's definitely a very cozy, soft, kind of friendly um, art form. All right, so when you think of spray painting, so I mean, without naming any names, is there, who in the room has tried, has used spray paint for any reason before? So almost all of us, same, same thing, like all but one in the room has done something with spray paint. Um, so you might think of, you know, tags, you might think of case two. And if you don't know who that is, you need to look it up right now. Painting on the subways in New York, he's a true master. Um, or you might think of um, interacting with police, which is a negative connotation that that might have. Um, you know, words like aggressive or, you know, hard. What other things like when you think of spray painting? Um, Vandal, for sure. I think beautiful. Like murals, beautiful blends, but that's me. Colorful. Colorful, for sure. The smell. Difficult. Yeah. Also very really brave. Mm hmm Yeah, it can be brave for sure. Urban city. Mm hmm Urban city. Trains. Yeah, trains like Case and all the people who've painted trains for many, many years and still do. Um, so I mean, I think there's something important to think about with yarn versus spray paint. So I can walk down the street with a bag of yarn, the whole lot of yarn, and nobody even looks at me. No one would think twice about any of us if we were carrying a skein of yarn and a crochet hook or a pair of knitting needles, which 
for the people who are listening on this recording, I'm waving knitting needles around. Um, <laughs> but if you have even one spray can and it's out in your hand, that is seen as a very aggressive thing. Even if you have no intention of using it, you just happen to be carrying it, the people are going to look at you and be like, what, what are you doing? And, you know, you can attract negative attention just from having it. So, I mean, it is a definite, it's, it's a, it's a contrast, but it is the same thing. Um, what goes into acrylic yarn, which is what I use most of the time. And what it goes into spray paint is the same material. It's just stranded versus sprayed and liquid. It's really pretty much two sides of the same material. Um, so this is a story about yarn and spray paint and the giving of gifts and where that can take you and where that has taken me. Um, so I am a yarn artist and um, painter. I use spray paint, I use um, yarn, I use watercolor. And I need to say right away, I am very new at this. I'm still experimenting and learning all the time from the people around me. And um, I don't, I am not an expert. So this is just my point of view and on my experience. Um, so I am from Texas, originally I'm from Dallas. I have lived in other parts of the country where it was colder, um, like Colorado and Massachusetts, a few other places. Um, but I'm sort of new to Miami. I got here in 2018 because of a job transfer, not of my own free will. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. I, nothing. I was totally, I almost didn't know where it was located. Like I had to check the map. It's like, which side of Florida is Miami on? Oh, okay. It's on the right side. Um, well, when you're, when you're from Texas, it's, you know, somewhere over there. Um, so I didn't really know anything about, you know, Miami and I wasn't an artist per se. So I had been doing art as a kid. I had done um, studio art as a major in college actually, but I never viewed it as a career. Um, I just kind of did it off to the side. I got my degree. I did painting, printmaking, watercolor, watercolor and oil painting mostly. And then I went off and got a degree in communications and did communications for a real long time. Um, off to the side were some of these amazing early works, such as the 1980s needlepoint kit you will see on the far side there that I completed. Um, and then a quilt, like a quilted pillow. I knitted clothes. I knitted monsters. That's Petunia on the right. She's a, a prized possession of my, my child um, still. Um, but I was self-taught. And one of the things that I've always done is invented a lot. So I don't usually, my knitting needles are running away, sorry. I don't usually follow a pattern. Like the example on the left of the needlepoint kit is a pretty unusual thing for me to be exactly following a pattern. Usually I make it up uh, based on something else I find. And I was always doing that off to the side. So working, doing that a little bit, but I certainly would not have said I was an artist. And I had never spray painted anything except for like the chairs in my backyard. Um, so it got, I got to Miami and it was, it was pretty hot here. So this type of knitting that I had been doing, uh, was no longer relevant to my life <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. I liked knitting hats and things, um, mostly for other people. So I tend to be a person, even all this time before I started doing what I do now, giving gifts, um, making it with someone in mind. And that was really important to me. Um, so anyway, so I got here, I arrived in Miami and I, I immediately start to experience just everything here. It's so different than anywhere else I'd ever been in the world. I mean, I've traveled a lot of places, but I've never been anywhere like this. And it has changed me a lot. Um, not just the city and the way that culture is, but also the immediate, you know, one of the first places I went as a visiting, you know, getting ready to move here was Wynwood Walls to look at the graffiti and I'd never seen a street art rather and I'd never seen anything like this you know that there are very few places in this world that have this concentration of art available on the street um and it was striking to me and I was like just really interested I didn't ever dream I would be part of it but I thought this is really cool so at the same time I was having a very difficult time transitioning to living here um, my mother passed away and all kinds of bad things were happening. And I was like, really, really sad. And so was looking for something uh, to feel better. 
my mother who died of Parkinson's had tried to learn to crochet um, toward the end of her life, but she never could get it. I don't know if it was something cognitive or something about the physical aspect, but she just couldn't do it. And it just kind of came to me like, uh, you know, I think I want to try crocheting. It was almost like an unfinished thing for her. Like, can I do this? You know, maybe it's kind of like a completion of this project for her. So I started trying and I wasn't very good at it. And I was making really weird shapes that didn't, they weren't, it wasn't really doing what I was, you know, wanting it to do, but it was kind of fun and interesting. And then I had, I was, I felt, I cannot describe this in any other way than I felt compelled. And I just thought, I think I need to like start doing something to make people have a better day. Like if someone's honking at me in traffic, maybe if I can make someone else have a little bit better day, then that will sort of spread this idea of finding a little bit of joy. And I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna put something out on the street. And I did. <laughs> so on May 9th, 2019, it was um, just kind of early in the morning and I stopped by, it's a place on 29th street that used to be the Wynwood yard. If anybody's been around here long enough to know where that was. Um, it's now, I think a high rise. <laughs> like so many of these spots are. And I hung that up on the fence and I ran away because I thought I was criminal. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but in fact, I learned later that the, probably the most serious violation would be littering for this type of thing. Um, so I did that and I went on my day and I had a little Instagram which had zero followers, but I put it on a little tag and the tag says, you know, please look after this art, but kind of thinking of the idea of like Paddington Bear being left and having that little tag on his coat. You know, I wanted to indicate like, this is for taking, like this is, no, there's no question. I want you to have this. And the person who found it is someone who is super important to me now. He's a tremendous graffiti artist, musician, and just all around creative force. And he's, his name is Rage Johnson. And so I looked at his Instagram, he posted on Instagram. I looked at his Instagram and it said, cool street art find. Thanks, Kern Myrtle. And I was like, wow, if that artist thought this was art, maybe it is. <laughs> so I thought, well, that was cool. Let's do that some more. Oops, wrong way. Sorry. So I started just doing it pretty much every day. And I did it every day without anyone knowing who I was for a couple of years almost. And I would just make stuff and put a little tag on it and just hang it on a fence. And through going around Wynwood, I got to know also the character of the neighborhood, how it was changing, even at that time, which was, so we're in 2019 still, you know, I can see the change between now and then. It's so drastic. So many things torn down since then. I mean, I've just basically watched everything go in this really short period of time. Different shapes, weird color combinations. It's just whatever kind of felt right. I just was making those and hanging them up and having a good time. And sometimes people would respond on Instagram and sometimes they wouldn't. Um, I mean, I kind of got to know the street sweeper ladies. You all know that some of you may know them around here. There's the ladies who clean up the street. They're really, they're pretty nice. And uh, they would wave at me and like, hey, oh, you're that one doing that. I was like, yeah, hi, hi. Anyway, they, but they didn't know who I was. Um, so I was doing that. I, I think you want to guess how many I did have done since then? How many I've left? Higher. A hundred, she said. Before, since 2019, since, 20, since mid 2019, yeah, between two and 300 is the best count. I did not keep a spreadsheet. I'll just put it that way. I'm not, I'm not that, that person. Um, but it was cool. Cause I was kind of, even though nobody knew me, I was developing connections with people who would find them on Instagram and just, you know, I sort of started building this little community and learning more about what was happening here. What was graffiti. Um, one of the big influences for me is the opening of the Museum of Graffiti in 2019, um, going there and just starting to learn more about the culture because this was all new to me. I didn't know anything. Um, more different shapes. That one I think is in, yeah, that's in New York. I started trading art with people in other parts of the country and like mailing it to them and they would mail me stuff and I would put things up here for them. So that things went everywhere. I, I didn't, I haven't made that many cans, but this can was during Basel 2019. And the person who found it was a guy from, he's a graffiti writer from New Jersey. And so I had some interesting interactions with him talking about letters and writing and uh, these, it was, every little stuff was leading us, you know, we're gonna, spray paint's not here yet, but it's coming, you'll see. <laughs> um, so somewhere between 
that and I guess really that Basil just seeing everyone here painting and having a good time while I was hanging my little things up the idea came to me like I I think I want to I want to write my name yeah. and I don't know how to spray paint but I I can do yarn so this was the first time I put my name in yarn anywhere and it's on the it was right out here outside this building of mana and I don't know if the guys who clean up took it down or if somebody has it I never I'm never sure sometimes I know and sometimes I don't and that's okay so that was the first time I did it I like how the e kind of looks like a claw <laughs> um and then I participated in a contest that was going on with the Museum of Graffiti and their you know the people they were working with and I did wet paint in um, yarn I did not win that contest I still have that piece at home um, but I had this idea to stage a solo show on a fence for that next art week, which is now we're talking about Art Basel 2020 during the pandemic. Um, so I put, I made these letters and I mean, I look at it now and it's like sort of embarrassing, but also why not? You know, this is kind of my motto is why not? And so it's always why not all the time. How long did it take you to crochet all of that? So that took me about starting in November and pretty much every day in November until that first it's usually right the first weekend or around the first of December um, and I made a whole whole bunch of pieces to give away so my thought was I want to have a place where people will can come and get my things and they aren't just scattered everywhere they're kind of you know like it's like a central spot and I also had a few collaborations in there there's if you look there's a couple of seahorses there's a little white panel that says you are loved that's an artist in Philadelphia and I made that out of yarn of his design and there's a couple other little things in there so people were sending me stuff oh the seahorses are from Ellie D is day show I'm not saying that right from made by Ellie in Brooklyn who is one of my friends now so these are some of those pieces not all of them nearly but I mean I was just making as many as I could as fast as I could to get ready for that and that's the little guy who I kept who actually I brought with me he's on the table um somebody wrote marked on the e they gave the e a little a little frowny face <laughs> with spray paint or mop or something i think it's a spray paint. yeah it's yeah. look it's right there and i i couldn't leave it i had to keep it i loved it too much so that was kind of like suddenly letters are happening so i'm always leaving these things on the street which p.s they are not jellyfish i'm the only person who doesn't think they're jellyfish <laughs> they're not supposed to be jellyfish but they everyone except me including the ai think they are jellyfish like the AI was putting the captions on my um, PowerPoint and it said, it, it, it writes what it thinks it should be for like accessibility purposes. And it said, um, a room of jellyfish and a forest or something. I was like, oh my gosh, okay, well, I, I'm, I will never give up. It is not intentionally jellyfish. Um, so I started doing letters and also kind of just creeping out to meet people. So through some of those connections, I, I asked, well, I submitted this to be in an art show that, Cam and um, Nati um, curated that was called Till Death. And so I did Love You to Death. And then not too long after that, I wrote Why Not and left that on a fence. It's pretty much right across from here. Someone took that. And then I got accepted to an international show in Milan um, called, well, it was, it's Yarn Bombing Trevento Milan edition. And I was like, you know what? I think it's time to try to really do this full size. So this is pretty well a full size piece. It's hard to tell because the, the scale in the slide, but it's about seven feet wide by maybe three. Yeah, it's about three feet tall. It's pretty tall. And I mean, this is my, again, I feel pretty cringe when I look at it, <laughs> but I'm trying. And I mean, it was a huge labor of love to do it. It took, again, took quite a long time to make. Um, but I was very happy with it and I felt like that was the best I could do at the time. International. And yeah, that definitely have done a few international things <laughs> now. Um, so this went to Italy and was shown there with a bunch of other really cool stuff. Um, and this is where I stop and say, we need to talk for a second about yarn bombing. So I didn't really even think that I was, I didn't have any thought that I was a yarn bomber. This was not like a conscious choice, but I realized I was putting yarn art on the street. So I was calling it yarn-based street art. I was like, I'm not a yarn bomber. That's people putting things on trees. I'm not that person, but it turned out I actually am that person. <laughs> and I didn't really know what yarn bombing meant. So yarn bombing can mean 
any kind of yarn in the public sphere. And it could be to beautify an area. It could be for a political purpose. Um, that there are many reasons people do it. Um, it's just, it, it is the act of using yarn to put your ideas, whatever that might be out. That's what I call it. So I was yarn bombing and I was in a show with a bunch of yarn bombers and I was kind of like interesting. And I was also starting to meet more and more people through art club, which um, was a group of people getting together. Yeah, pour out your beer for art club. But um, it was a really cool group of people getting together, drawing, and they welcomed me, even though I was this yarn weirdo. And that meant a lot, you know? Okay, so we're gonna take a pause and we're gonna talk about this person who everyone should learn about if you don't know about Annie Alberts um, from the Bauhaus. So she is an, in, in, can I say badass? to the FIU public. I mean, so about a hundred years ago, a whole bunch of badasses were running around doing some amazing things and having some amazing thoughts and philosophy about art and all life and everything, but especially art. And she didn't even, she was textile designer, but so much more than that. So if you don't know about her, like read about her now. Students, stop and read about Annie Albers. Pause this presentation. Um, but the quote that I love, the two quotes from her, one is you can go anywhere from anywhere. And the other one is that let the materials lead you. And they do, it's, it sounds weird, but they do. Um, so because I met people who knew how to spray paint because I was visiting, you know, going to art club and experiencing all this stuff, I had an invitation to help out on a permission spot that was a construction site and people were being invited to just come and paint. And so I picked up the spray can for the first time and I painted this, which again, I feel massively cringe about, <laughs> but I was like, I can spray paint now. Oh, <laughs> yay. Um, but it was pretty exciting. And I had never done that before. I truly, I knew nothing, nothing. It looks just like your, your textile, your fiber. It looks just like, yeah, my handwriting is the same no matter how I do it. And I don't, I, I, I've noticed that before and I have no idea why that's the case. It's it's without trying, it always, it looks the same. Yeah, and I, but my initial thought too was like, well, this is a tarp is, you know, permeable. So I think I can sew through this. Let's see what happens. And so I sewed my own highlights on and I added this piece actually changed over time that other stuff got added to it. It it this was just the kind of first photo I found of it. And I wanted you to see it the way it looked that night or day, probably when I took the picture. But I, I thought being on the street was fun. And I sat out there all by myself sometimes with my needle and thread and sewing and making crochet and figuring it out. And I was like, this is cool. And I'd never done it before. So, I mean, my experience of the street up until then was just running and going like, dink, hanging something up, dink, hanging something up, run away, run away. And now I was like with some other people who were nice and who were teaching me things. So I did that. On the same construction site, um, other people were painting and I worked with a few of them to paint, to add yarn to what they had painted. Because I still didn't feel like I deserved to paint or had like standing, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, yeah, well, I mean, people are laughing now, but you know, I didn't understand how it worked. I didn't feel like I was that. I was not that. Um, and Ket is, you know, really well known for those of you who don't know. Look him up, Alan Ket. He's the co-founder of the Museum of Graffiti. He's from New York. He's got an amazing, you know, history of working with graffiti in his life. I mean, doing graffiti and other art. And I talked to him and I said, like, hey, can I put some yarn on your thing? And he was like, I'm sure he was like, weird why okay <laughs> why are you even asking me but I did and I sat out there sewing the yarn on and I had so much fun um and it was really I enjoyed that so that was the whole yarn and paint thing that has continued till now actually and that's a close-up of of some of the work on there all they are were just simple circles and I was so careful to try and find the yarn to match the colors he had used and I'm pretty sure he said that he had just used the paint that was in his trunk yeah. you know it wasn't like some you know, carefully curated thing but I was all like I will faithfully reproduce your thing um so I did um then on the same construction site you can see the k of the little kern to the right there was some room to paint on some plywood and I was like I, I was like I will take that because I've started to learn you need to say yes when anyone says here's a spot 
Um, and I thought it would be kind of fun to do yarn stencils, which is something I also still do. So I had some, I had tried this in my backyard actually a little bit, to see what would happen. Um, I took the yarn stencils I made and I actually hand cut them out of cardboard, um, like poster board, because I realized you couldn't really hold floppy yarn against the wall very well. <laughs> that didn't take me long to figure that one out. Um, but this is a pretty big spot. And it's on a big street. This is on 29th Street. So I think you're about to see how many ways I've learned that I seem to not be afraid to um, look bad in public or not be great yet in public. Learning in public, we'll call it that way. I still do. <laughs> Someone in the room who knows I exactly still do that, like not doing a very good job in public. Um, so there's a close-up of that wall. It, to me, it feels like a train wreck now, but there are some great moments in it, like this little uh, kind of yellow, pink, orange thing. I, I kind of like that. And there's there's a little bit of that in there. like, And the drips, that was a suggestion that my friend gave me to give it some structure because it just looked like, you know, stuff everywhere. So learning from people around you, which is a big part of the graffiti tradition, you know, your friends teaching you stuff by being out there. Was that, is that still there or is it gone? Oh, long gone. No, the building, that was, this is the Dorsey um, construction site. So it was there. It was on another building. It's also gone. You'll see it in a minute. Um, this is back in the, behind the old Miami Art Society um, in that same year in 21 when JP said, oh, the wall's blank. You want to paint? And I was like, sure. I mean, this thing is like seven feet tall. I mean, I've never been like, I don't know how to do it. I think I'll start small. I'm like, I don't know how to do it. I think I'll make it like I'm gonna get as high as I can reach. I need a ladder. Yeah, there's some issues, but it's still, I mean, yeah, there's I kind of like the colors. Yeah, sort of right. Not that E boy. Oof. Anyway, but but the colors, I mean, I like the colors and I like you can I'm pretty clean on the edges of the outline on the outside. That's pretty good. Anyway, I'm learning. So this is a few and far women production that Nico um, organizes and she invited me to be a part of it. And again, I'm thinking, why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't you know, I don't really know how to, what I'm gonna do, but I'll try, I'll figure it out. So I had been making those pink letters um, without knowing where they were gonna end up yet. Um, when I fell and broke my ankle, which is another story for another time, um, but I had time in bed because I had broken my ankle. So I was making these letters and those guys are pretty big. I think that the height is probably about three feet. Um, so I made the letters and then I figured out, I started with spray paint. Um, and then I took my cordless glue gun, which is one of the best things I ever learned about besides spray paint. And I glued all this yarn to it. And I think I've got a close up there where you can see what it looked like. Um, and this was a gate that didn't open. It was, it's a building that's also been torn down, um, but it was, it stuck on there really well. So it stayed for, till they tore the building down, which was, when did they tear that down? No, a year, more than a year. This was, this was up for more than, more than a year. I think it was, it was torn. Last basil. yeah, last basil, it was still there. And then it, then the building was torn down, I think right after that. And when I went and looked at the construction rubble, which I didn't put that in the slideshow, that you can actually see where this glue held, uh, even though the building was torn to pieces. Like there's little bits of yarn still attached. <laughs> it's really, I was touching it and like, mm -hmm. dirty. It's Gorilla Glue Sticks. Oh. So uh, this is my endorsement for Gorilla Glue Sticks <laughs> because I've used them a lot and they really, really work. That was my friend Lynette who does yarn bombing in Philadelphia told me about that. So big up Lynette. Um, so then this is this at the same time I did why not um, on a fence. And these are, by the way, these are not permission spots. These are spots that you kind of see if anybody cares at, or if, you know, kind of ask forgiveness later and nobody seems to mind these. Um, this stayed for a long time. It um, included work of more than 20 people from all over the country and the couple, one person from England and one person in this room, Colette, um, and everybody sent their different why nots. And there's Gross Clinic there on the side. He helped me fit it up. Um, so every, this, this isn't even all of them because they were already being taken before I could get the picture. Um, but people put their sent all this stuff to me and I put it up and we had a little collective exhibition and I think you can see it there uh, on the right side by the question mark 
I made a typed like um, sign as if we're in a gallery and a little QR code. So it looked like Art Basel and I put like a title and everything. And I, I saw so many people like taking pictures of it because, you know, they just are like, oh, this is an exhibit, you know? Yeah, it is. It has a sign and everything, but it's whatever. <laughs> so that was that. And then more yarn and yarn and tarp um, on a permission area with um, just practicing my spray painting and trying to figure it out. I mean, I again, I'll try to quit saying how cringe it makes me feel, but I like the colors. It's so good. Eh, it's getting there. But again, sewing on the tarp, I like sewing on tarp. It's fun to some, to a point. And you'll see why I feel that way in a second. Um, oh, I do have a video in here. This is on um, Miami Art Society right across the street. Um, the, the middle area of the building had been left blank. I think it was part of an activation, like maybe people were dancing up there. So there was that that sort of place where I wrote Kern had nothing in it. And then people were starting to just write, just tag it. And I asked Brian Butler if he wouldn't mind if I would paint on it. And he was like, oh yeah, Kern it up, Kern it up. And so I did, I painted that and I glued some yarn on. I like those colors still. Um, and I was also kind of playing around with watercolors and how that whole thinking back to the stencil idea, how could I bring more stencil in? And I've always liked watercolors. So this, I've got a whole bunch of these and this is taking us, we're about to go somewhere from somewhere, like Annie Albers said. You can go anywhere from anywhere. Um, I do love my Cricut. And this is the Photoshop file that goes with the Cricut stencil that the people in the room have been able to see. And then this is a building I painted it on, not this exact stencil. Um, again, I was I got lucky enough to help on this production, um, help organize it. It's a, a paid job with my friend um, and from murals and such. And he gave me this little spot and I got to try. And I, again, this is, I think everybody has to take away from this. That if someone says, here's an opportunity, just so you need to say yes, and then figure it out. Because he's like, okay, you're going to project it. And I'm like, am I? How do you do that? <laughs> How, what do I do now? I am confused, I'm super confused, but I figured it out. And I mean, I've got to say, there is so much paint on this wall. I was going over and over and over trying to get it right. There you can see it in context with, I did project that, wow. yeah. Yeah, I've learned to sketch it now, but I, I can sketch it. You'll see in a second. Um, well, I mean, you know, these are techniques. I'm being taught this. Like I have one of the one of the best mural painters around is my very close friend and he teaches me. So I I couldn't be more fortunate. I mean, yeah. this isn't something you just roll out of bed knowing how to do. Clearly, because I had no idea how to do it before. Go on YouTube. There's no YouTube for that. No. <laughs> Um, so this was a really cool project, actually. So the, the art next to mine is, um, is Baghead. Really cool. And Diana. Um, this is another piece on Miami Art Society across the street a little bit later on where I added yarn with my glue gun. It's still there. Um, I mean, Hawks has painted over it, but the yarn is still there. And uh, yeah, just kind of plan, expanding this idea, right? I mean, you can just see how it is. It's, it's just like everything goes from one idea to the other. And I like new ideas. I don't mind a little repetition like this, but every time it's different. And this is the wall down the street from here that I did last year, again, with help, a little help on that shadow paint from my friend, because that's beyond my skill level. <laughs> but the rest is me, all me. Um, I sketched this one. So this was never finished because they tore the building down. You're seeing a theme, right? Um, I was right. I, I, you know, it's going to take my time, but still I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go back the, like in a week and fi finish it. And then I heard that they were getting ready to demolish it. And like, I went back the next day and it was gone. <laughs> um, so I never got to finish it kind of annoyed me, but I did crawl around in the rubble and pick up as many pieces of it as I could so that in the future I can make something out of it. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna make out of it, like whether it's gonna be some kind of work on panel or I don't know, but I have a lot of pieces, a whole lot of dusty gross pieces. Okay, so now we get to kind of like the culmination of yarn on tarp for me so far, which is this. Um, we had a show, the first major show of yarn bombing in conjunction with the world's largest trade show for people who sell basically like yarn, fabric, needlepoint supplies, all that stuff. 
So we're talking thousands of attendees who are all people who work in the business, plus many more thousands of locals in Cologne, Germany, who came to look at things and lots of good local media coverage and about 60 people from around the world who brought their yarn bombing. And it was truly like the meeting of the weirdos. It was so great because the people who brought things are all people who think really differently about yarn. And that's what I like, you know, is like people who are not just like doing the same thing. I want to see like a weirdo with a specific vision. That's what I'm interested in. Um, so I had the idea, like, I'm going to replicate a piece that I have painted on tarp and make it with some yarn. And I started and it took about three months. So I started in January with painting on the tarp and it's spray painting in my yard. And then I have a fence with like an outline of this. Actually, it's got other stuff on it now, but anyway. Um, I did have a fence with an outline of it. And then I took it to my studio and started sewing all this stuff on it. So from the side, you can kind of see, but from the back, you can really see. I should let people see that though. So the, the amount of yarn, it's not completely covered. The letters are covered. The background is spray. I wanted to like let the spray sort of still be there. Um, but it, it was a lot. You can see all the stitches running across and yeah, it was a lot of work. And the 3D came out perfect too. I put the little lines in, you know. Um, what is that? The stars? That's your oh, the stars are paper. Oh, sure. That was a late edition in Germany with it's glitter, perfect. glitter star paper. And from a distance, it's, I have a further away photos. You, it looks good. And so are those, the drips, are those threads that are hanging down? The drips are threads hanging down, yeah. I don't like cutting the ends, so I don't. And they look like drips. They do, don't they? They look like drips. It's just the way it is for me. So that's Germany. The backs are always interesting, right? Yeah, that's a for people who do fiber, the backs of things is always interesting. The backs of needle points, the backs of anything, really. The reverse side is often more interesting in some ways. And there's a close up of how it looks. And I have it, I brought it home. So I, I have it hanging up. Well, You've seen it. Uh, one, I think you're the only person in the room who's seen it. Yeah, in real life. But I have it. So it'll probably come out at some point and people can see it again. It's a runner. It is. Yeah, it's a runner. It is. Why is it? I've got the dimensions somewhere, but I don't know. Is that like a turn and repeating? Oh, it runs. It mm -hmm. keeps going. Uh, it doesn't really count though because it's like in my... In, a, in my building that belongs to me, not on the street. I have a feeling it would not run long on the street. I think it, I think we know it would be gone pretty fast. Um, how wide is it? It's it's uh, ten feet, hey, and it's pretty big. I don't know. I can I can get back to you on that. I don't know. Stop my head. It's large. I mean, these are construction fence panels, and it takes up most of it. Um, standard size tarp. Okay. So then I I do like saying yes, um, even when I, again, have no reason to. <laughs> um, and I got the opportunity to do an installation um, over here at Miami Art Society this summer. Um, so JP just kind of said, um, hey, you want to do an installation? Maybe a room. And I thought, oh, a room? Okay, maybe like a little bitty closet-y thing or something. And he was like, I said, how big, how big are you thinking? And he's like, oh, like 10 by 10, 10 by 15. And I was like, oh, Sure. Oh, sure. Okay. And I thought a black light would be fun because I like that. And I like neons always. And um, I just started making stuff as fast as I could for um, about six weeks making stuff. And the room didn't exist yet. So I couldn't really do anything about that um, until like a couple of days before the show. So this was a group show of women called Quilla and it included lots and lots of women artists from around here and not around here. Um, and I did kind of like a 4D experience. So motion, the lighting, scent. I got, I went scent shopping and bought all these weird things and sprayed them in the room um, and music. My friend created some music to go in there as well. Um, so the painting on the wall also, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but these are some of the 18 hanging pieces that were a part of it. Um, and the wall, so I had two days to put all this up, less than two. And I really needed help. So my friend helped me and he painted that mural overnight the night before, spray painting indoors from my sketches and basically just looking at that wall and figuring it out for me. 
So again, I can't give enough credit to Rage Johnson because his incredible skill, but also just that to, to have someone else who really cares about your art that way. I mean, that's not just like, quote, I'll help you. I mean, that's like, that's something really, really special to have that. So to me, this is a collaboration and he will probably never listen to this so I can say it, but I mean, he would be like, oh, don't give me credit, whatever. I'm like, he has, he needs credit for that. Cause I mean, you all have seen from the evidence presented that I can in fact paint this design but I could never have painted that overnight. overnight. Uh, no, uh, no. <laughs> so, and I, besides I was busy doing that. I was still crocheting. I mean, I wasn't ready. I was there till 6.30 in the morning up. Okay, so a few more shots of the little pieces hanging. Some people enjoying it. Oh, that may be someone, some of you know, there in the background. Um, I use different materials on this. So if to me, if you can crochet it, it's valid. So there's tool and there's rope, um, all kinds of things, ju not just acrylic yarn. And then it had one final life last weekend at Three Points. Um, after the walls were gone, you can see what was left is just the painting. And then we did some yarn up on the ceiling only so that the ravers couldn't like hurt it or get tangled in it or whatever. So that was just like a final addition. Well, ra ravers might get tangled in something. Yeah. I'm getting some con confused looks from the crowd. So we wanted to make it just, you know, like there, but not like dangerous in any way. Um, so I did yarn all across the ceiling to just kind of extend the design and give it one last little life before it goes down and that building's going down i think too really soon i know oh uh, well, that's a conversation for not on this zoom but i'll tell you what i know um so yeah so it went to three points and it's that was that so that's just you know where we are now so what's next i don't know i think we'll probably talk about that a little bit in q a i mean to me this is just this, I barely, I feel like I've barely learned anything. You know, this is such the beginning. So it's just like, yeah, I've grown a lot in a short time and learned a lot. And I just want to keep learning from anyone who will teach me good stuff and experimenting. And I have a zillion ideas. I have so many crazy ideas. So it's not like I don't ever sit around and go, oh, what should I do next? <laughs> it's more like, how can I, how will I have time to do what is next? So that's just kind of where I, I sit with it. So I think if there's any lesson, it's about, you know, saying yes to all your opportunities. Don't letting anyone, don't let anyone put you in a box and say, you're only a fiber artist. You're only a graffiti writer. You're only a graphic designer, whatever, you know, it's, you can go anywhere from anywhere. Like Annie's right. She's long gone, but she is a hundred percent right on most of her ideas. So I think that's, where, where it's at for me. Just keep going. Keep going. Thank you. Question, do you want to come up here to do the questions? So, or do you want me to repeat them? I just meant for your recording. Okay. I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. We did it on very short notice. I think I, I was looking at our email today. I think we started emailing a few weeks ago. Yeah. So I appreciate you stepping up and doing this for this for us. Um, really, and um, you talk about yarn bombing, and but I think your work is more more than yarn bombing. I mean, I know you say that, but you, I was the first time I saw your work there. I was just like. Something totally different than I've ever seen before. Mm. You know, with the right age and then you know, you do the layers and the different materials and mediums. So I thought it was more than that. Um, but also, I mean, it's interesting because you have a studio. Mm -hmm. How many studio? Is it here? Is it home? It's not at my house. No, it's an actual separate space from my house. So I can think. Um, because, you know, it's typical like women working there's always that level of home homework that has to happen. Um, so I, I can't, I mean, I do tons of work at home. I mean, that's another, let's talk about that difference, right? So uh, yarn can be done anywhere, can be done in your lap. It's very intimate. It's happening in front of the TV, on your couch, cozy with your dog or whatever. Um, spray paint is, and that's fine motor skills. Spray paint is large muscle groups and being often outside and, you know, moving your body as you paint. And it's a whole different, it's like two different things. Hmm? The control. It's still got fine motor with your cans for sure. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's a, 
sometimes you need that immediacy and sometimes because you got to be patient with crochet it's going to take a while like people say oh how long did that take to make and I'm like I have no idea yeah, right. <laughs> um but I mean a while it's not like five seconds yeah when you spray paint it's pretty instant gratification yeah even if you're taking working on a bigger project that's going to take a while it's still um yeah it feels good they both feel good in different ways so I don't think I answered your question what do I do in the studio um my studio is for when I need room for big stuff so like a longer term project like that piece that went to Germany I couldn't have done that I could not have taken that on any other way than having a separate studio space with a big wall for it to just stay on and be a mess in and table space so it's some storage but also about that that just room to spread it out for sure What's that feeling like when somebody tags you on Instagram that they found your piece? It feels when someone tags me on Instagram that they found it, it always feels great. And I love to know, like connect with people who found things. You know, that's part of what has always been good about this is feeling that it's it's you're sharing something with somebody. And then they're so they're if they're putting on Instagram, they're happy. Like they've had some kind of reaction to it. And that's what a, that's where this all starts. It starts from spreading that feeling of like joyful discovery. You found something cool on the street. Who would have ever thought that, you know? And then there's people who like to hunt for art. Yeah. I think a few, I think I know a couple of them in this room. Um, and then there's people who just encounter it, you know, like they're just walking by and they're like, what the heck is this? And then they look at the tag. And I feel like it's the often it is someone is supposed to find it like it, it may sit there for a while and then someone comes by and it's like been a week and then they get it so it's like it was supposed to be theirs for whatever reason without being too like woo, woo, woo. but I mean I think it's true yeah. and yeah it's cool so what you got some other questions on your list so you, I mean, you discussed it a little bit about how the painting is different than the fiber or the mm -hmm. shade. Talk about is there a difference to you? Or are they the same? Or hmm. so are is there a difference between painting and crocheting? Hi. Um. I. Yes. Yes. There is a difference. Um. I think that crocheting, so crocheting, I view yarn as a sculptural project. It's not usually flat for me. I mean, I'm sitting here with flat things all over the table, but um, it's like sculpting with yarn and spray paint is just by necessity going to be flat unless you're applying it to something else that's bumpy, which you certainly can. Um, I mean, a train is something you could apply it to that would be bumpy. Yes, <laughs> but other things too. Um, but I've been thinking a lot about that, actually, like how to bring, not trains, but like how to bring um, the sort of some bumpier qualities to my work, like using different mediums. You know, there's all those weird acrylic mediums that exist that I've never really paid much attention to, like acrylic gel mediums that have body. And how could that be a part of something like work on panel or works on paper or two? So I don't know. I don't know. It's always open. And then, yeah, you know, spray painting. Just fun. Is there anything that's like on your goal? Like I have to do this, like as far as like your art, like not just a commission piece or something like I'm not sure a goal that you're not gonna get so the question is do I have a goal that I am looking to achieve or hit or some specific thing that's on my list? Exactly. Hmm. Dream project. I don't know. I feel like every next project is the dream project. Like, and there's always a next project. I mean, that's the interesting thing. It's every, things have just keep happening and following from the next thing, you know, or you'll just like run into someone, you know, on the street and there's an opportunity that you wouldn't think of like, oh, there you are. Hi. Oh, hey, let's paint over here. You know, I mean, it can happen. Or people from another, from the building saw that and thought it was cool and said, oh, do you want to paint over here? I mean, it, so I think it's just, yeah, the next, next thing. There isn't one big, like, oh, I want to, 
whatever yarn the Statue of Liberty. I don't. I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, it's too high. It's too high. No, that sounds boring. So like, I, I'm very intuitive and I like to just sort of make what comes out. And when it comes, if it, there's even a lot of like drawing or planning, I start to be like, lose interest. You talk about that, your, your work is very organic. Mm -hmm. about, you don't follow patterns, you're just doing whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the, the question is about like, do the, the fact that I don't follow patterns and my work is very organic. Yeah, I mean, I've learned crocheting techniques. So I know... I mean, I know kind of now more than I did before. I know some techniques. I'm not just clueless, like randomly making knots, but um, I don't set out and think, oh, okay, I'm going to do 12 rounds of this and then do this. And, you know, it's not like that. It's just like, oh, I feel like this. I'm, I just start making stuff. Intuition. Yeah, it's completely intu intuitive when it comes to yarn. Even when making letters, you kind of just have to sculpt them like you sometimes I'll set a height so I might be like okay it's I chain I'll count that I might be like it's 15 to make sure the height is about the same but as you can see from most of the work it never looks the same <laughs> it always bends and gets all weird and is that a thing like when you visual in your mind you're, you're thinking about what it looks like in your mind and then when it happens does it look like what or it's totally different uh does it look like how I visualize it when I'm doing letters, that's plan. You do have to think about that a little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, I sometimes want to do stuff and redo it if I don't like it or it looks weird. Sometimes I'll pull stuff off, but when I'm making little like hanging stuff that's on the street or little hanging things, like I never, I never undo that. I just make it. Oh, well, they're, they're not jellyfish. <laughs> they're not <laughs> <laughs> laughing at me. FIU students, they're laughing at me. Um, I don't know what I call them. Pieces? Little, little freaks? Little freaks? <laughs> yeah. I think you brought something to like the Miami scene that's like never really been seen before. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really like your- Just Instagram. gotta be here. Like but whenever I would say something or like take a picture and tag, you would always say, oh, you would start that conversation. I just like that. Yeah, I, I like knowing people. That's why it's so weird that I was anonymous for so long. <laughs> like, I mean, I like being with people. I'm not like some weird recluse. I mean, I'm weird, but I'm not a recluse. Um, I like having friends. I just think it it was important and still is important to for for it not to be about me, like the personality, but for the person who receives the item or who finds the item or who just sees it to like put their own, it's, I want to be the blank wall for them. So I could be anyone, I could be any age, I know you want to talk about gender, I could be any gender, um, nobody knows, unless you happen to get to know me for real. What are some of the challenges you face in working in this medium or in this environment? That seen as a woman or just the medium you're using? Hmm, challenges I've faced? Um, yeah, really, yeah. The, the I mean, gentrification is, is the challenge. It's the challenge and the opportunity because as, as the buildings sit and wait to be torn down, they're the opportunity for us, you know? And then when they're torn down, they're gone. And so often they don't give the commission to local artists, you know, which is sad because I think I'd like to see more local artists getting opportunities to get paid. Because mm -hmm. like, as one of our good friends often will say, I'm not going to say it the way he says it, you know, um, I can't say it without saying it that way. Um, blank, 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 pay me. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> so artists need to get paid. I mean, they got to buy some supplies they got to pay the rent and they've got to get gas to get places i mean we have living needs and need to live so artists need jobs and it's great if artists can get paid when they're doing their work and for sure valued and not just as like oh they're window dressing yeah well there we might be brand vandal that's the biggest you know silly notion of art but in in terms of challenges i would say it's more like I don't feel like I face a lot of challenges. I feel like I'm I'm able to, because of being anonymous and who I actually am, I'm able to do a lot of things. And that's an advantage without people thinking about that that might be who's doing that. I don't know if that's clear.